Pre-AP pre-calculus was the second part of notes 3.5. We are focusing on points of inflection right now on these examples. How many points of inflection does the graph function below have? Label their approximate locations on the graph. Well, according to what we read up here, a point of inflection is going to be on any zero that's odd multiplicity of at least three. And this is a circular argument. But we're saying that there's one here because it crosses the x-axis and we can say that it's changing concavity. Between a zero of odd multiplicity of at least three, which we just named, and the nearest local min and max, there's going to be a point of inflection. So here is a max to the left, about halfway between those. Whoops. Sorry about that. About halfway between those, there's going to be a point of inflection. So about halfway between is about here. It's about negative 1.5. Odd multiplicity of at least 3. Here is a maximum or a minimum to the right. So about halfway between there, there's going to be a point of inflection. We are estimating. We are clearly estimating. Label their approximate locations. How many does it have? Three points of inflection. Number two, use the graph below to answer each question. There are two graphs, G and H. Approximate the x-coordinate of all inflection points for the graph function below. I'm sorry, the graph function that's above, and label the points on the graph. We are told up here that points of inflection are approximately halfway between a pair of extreme values. We are told that they are halfway between a zero of odd multiplicity of at least three and the, and the nearest min or max. So here is an extreme value. Here's another one. So the point of inflection or g of x we get g of x and we have to do h of x as well this point of inflection the x value is about halfway between so to find halfway between we're going to add these x values and divide them by 2 so that's 1 plus 3 over 2 That is 4 over 2. So the x value is about at 2. For h of x, the point of inflection, the x value, we're saying, is about halfway between. So it says all points of inflection. So we got one here, for sure, at negative 2. Using the word for sure loosely, it looks like it's at negative 2. And then there's going to be one halfway between negative 2 and x equals 1. That one we're going to approximate. It's halfway between negative 2 and 1. So we add those and divide them by 2. Let me change these two approximates. So to sum up, here's what we're saying for g and h. We know that H has a point of inflection at negative 2. We know that H has an approximate point of inflection at x equals negative 1 half, and G has an approximate one at x equals 2. Identify the intervals in which the graph functions um, above are concave up and concave down. So these points of inflection tell us where the concavity changes. So we are saying for G, Concavity is changing here, so that this part is concave down. And we are saying that this part here is concave up. I'm just going to copy this so I can see it down there better. So for g of x, it's concave. down from negative infinity until it gets to the inflection point at 2. Keep in mind, this is an approximation. It's concave up 
from the approximate point of inflection forever to the right. Concave down, concave up. Let me pull this other picture into this. Okay, we said that we had a point of inflection here at negative two, and then we said we had one about negative one half. So I'm suggesting that it's concave up to the left of negative two, and it's concave up from negative one half to infinity. I'm saying that it's concave down between those. So for h of x, it's concave down from this inflection point to this inflection point, which we are saying is from negative 2 to negative 1 half. It's an approximation. It's concave up to the left of this inflection point and to the right of this one. So that's from negative infinity to negative 2 in union with negative 1 half to infinity. We do not include the end point of these intervals in these. So we do not use hard brackets. All right, number three, use the graph that below to answer the questions. A, find the zeros and their multiplicities with reasoning. G of x crosses the x-axis at negative 2, 1, and 3 without changing concavity. Because of that, we can conclude x equals negative 2, 1, and 3 each have odd multiplicities of 1. Question B, what type of function is it and why? The multiplicity, the sum of the multiplicities is 3. Therefore, f of x is an odd degree of 3. In other words, it's um, a cubic function, you could say as well. C, what is the location of a relative maximum? Maximum, relative maximum, is when the graph changes from increasing to decreasing. So this is at the ordered pair negative 1, 5. It's an ordered pair, not an interval. Relative minimum, that's where it changes from decreasing to increasing. That's 2, negative 2. Absolute maximum, this graph goes up forever, there aren't any. Absolute minimum, the graph goes down forever, there are not any. I'm writing none. Approximate x value of the inflection points. There's only one point of inflection here that we know of. Well, there's only one. We have a maximum here and a minimum here. According to our little guidelines on the previous page, a point of inflection is halfway between those. So our point of inflection, x is going to be approximately halfway between negative 1 and 2. So we add those and divide by 2. So that gives us, we think that there's a point of inflection at x equals a half. It's an approximation. So once we know that, intervals at which the graph is concave up, it's concave up to the right of that point of inflection. So that's from 1 half to infinity. Intervals in which it's concave down. It's concave down to the left of that point of inflection. So that is from negative infinity to 1 half. Try to write more legible. negative infinity to a positive one half. All right, question four. Use the graph below to answer each question. What's the left end behavior? If you recall, left end behavior means what's happening to the y values as we go left forever. So the limit of h of x as x goes to negative infinity well, if you look, as we go left forever, the graph's going down forever. Down for y is negative infinity. The right end behavior, what's the limit of h of x as x approaches 
positive infinity. As we go right forever, also going down, so it's going to negative infinity. Zeros and their multiplicities with reasoning. Well, I'm just going to put it up in the picture first. I think that makes this easier. This is odd multiplicity of 1 because it crosses, doesn't change concavity. This is odd multiplicity of 1, crosses, doesn't change concavity. This is an even multiplicity of at least 2 because it's tangent. Let's just start with that. Zeros in their multiplicities. H of x crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 5 and x equals 2, and it doesn't change concavity. Therefore, h of x has zeros of x equals negative 5 and 2 with odd multiplicities of 1. Good. h of x is tangent to the x-axis at x equals negative 2. Therefore, h of x has a 0 at x equals negative 2 with an even multiplicity of at least 2. What type of function is this and why? Well, if we add multiplicities of 1 and 1, and then an even number of at least 2, that means this degree is at least 4. The sum of the multiplicities is even, and it's at least 4. Therefore, this h of x is even degree of at least 4. Relative maximum. Relative maximums happen here and here because the graph changes from increasing to decreasing. It's negative 4, 3, and 1, 6. Those are ordered pairs, not intervals. Relative minimum. Relative minimum happens here because the graph changes from decreasing to increasing. That is the ordered pair, negative 2, 0. Absolute maximum. The absolute highest point on the graph is here at 1, 6. The graph does not go up forever, so there is a relative or an absolute maximum. There's no absolute minimum because the graph goes down forever. There is no lowest point. Approximate x values of the points of inflection. I'm just going to mark where they are, about here and about here. I'm saying that that's about halfway between negative 4 and negative 2. This is about halfway between negative 2 and positive 1. Let's show the work for that. Point of inflection, x is about halfway between the x values of negative 4 and negative 2. So that is about at negative 3. And we have another one that's about halfway between negative 2 and 2. Which is at 0. Nope, I'm sorry, it's not negative 2 and 2. It's negative 2 and 1. Mistake. So it's at negative 1 half, and visually that makes more sense. J and K, intervals where the graph is concave up. Let me highlight this. It's concave up between these two inflection points which are approximations. So we're saying it's about from negative 3 to negative 1 half. To my knowledge, there's no way to write approximations in interval notation. Intervals where it's concave down. It's concave down on these blue intervals, which is from negative infinity to the first point of inflection. And then after the second point of inflection to infinity. And it's not negative one, it's negative one half. All right, that concludes it. We have one section left, and it's basically just a big glop and review and tying everything together. Please do the homework that it's associated with this section, section 3.5.